Welcome back. In this section, we'll be looking at composing trig functions with inverse trig functions, uh, but this time different pairs of inverse trig functions with trig functions. So um, unlike before where we did things like sine composed with sine inverse, here we'll be looking at things like sine composed with tangent inverse or tangent inverse composed with sine. And we have two different cases to look at here. You could either have the inverse trig function being on the inside, or you could have the inverse trig function being the outside function. And so um, depending on which one is which, that'll inform what we do to solve the problem. So first let's look at the case where the inverse trig function is on the inside. And, of course, you know that for an inverse trig function, what it gives you as an output is some sort of an angle. So that's where we begin. We say, let's let angle theta be that inverse trig function. And if you can find the exact value of that inverse trig function, then go right ahead. Please do. Um, so that means that if you have some sort of number here that comes from a special triangle or can be found from the graph of cosine then there we go, we can find our angle. Now, if you can't find your angle, you still can work this problem by drawing an angle in the appropriate quadrant and then figuring out the values of x, y, and r. Uh, so in this case, the cosine inverse of 5 sevenths, 5 sevenths is not a number that comes from a special triangle, so I won't be able to find my angle theta. I will say that I know that the value that we have here 5 sevenths is positive. And I know that for cosine, cosine only gives me positive values in quadrants 1 and 4. Now, cosine inverse only gives me output between 0 and pi. And so if I want cosine to be positive, then I guess we're really talking about an angle that's in quadrant 1. So that's how I know that if cosine inverse of 5 sevenths is the angle I'm talking about, then that angle has to be in quadrant 1. And you know that if theta is cosine inverse of 5 sevenths, then you could rewrite that as the equation, cosine theta is 5 sevenths. Or in other words, you know that x over r is 5 sevenths. That's how I find that I'll have an angle in quadrant 1 where x is 5 and r is 7, and then I can find out what y is. And once I know the values of x and y and r, then I can go back and solve my original problem. Because in the original problem, you were looking for sine of cosine inverse of 5 sevenths, or in other words, you were looking for sine of that angle theta. And now that you know the values of x, y, and r for that angle theta, you can find what sine is. Sine is just the y value over the r, value, or in other words, 2 root 6 over 7. So let's do a couple of examples here. First, let's begin with letting our angle theta be the inverse trig function sine inverse of negative root 2 over 2. And this is one that we can evaluate by hand for sure, because uh, if you're looking back at your special triangles, you'll know that root 2 over 2 does come out of a special triangle. It comes out of the, the 45, 45, 90 triangle. You know that sine of pi over 4 is positive root 2 over 2. And so that means that sine of negative pi over 4 is negative root 2 over 2. And sine inverse gives us angles between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. And negative pi over 4 definitely is in that interval. So if you know that theta is sine inverse of negative root 2 over 2, then you know that theta should be negative pi over 4. So we figured out what the angle is. And now that we have that, we can actually solve our problem because if we're looking for cosine of sine inverse of negative root 2 over 2, that's the same thing as looking at cosine of theta, and theta we just figured out was negative pi over 4. 
And now I'm just going to solve this like I would any other trig function evaluation. I'm looking at cosine of negative pi over 4. Cosine is even, so that's the same thing as cosine of positive pi over 4. And then using my special triangles, that's root 2 over 2. Okay, so this next one, again, we'll start by letting theta be cosine inverse of negative 6 thirteenths. Or in other words, what we're really looking for is the angle where cosine of theta is negative 6 thirteenths. Now, reminder again that for cosine inverse, it's giving you output that's between 0 and pi. So answers that are coming out of cosine inverse are going to be things in quadrants 1 or 2. And if we want an angle where cosine of theta is negative 6 thirteenths, then that wouldn't be in quadrant 1. That's where cosine is positive. We must be in quadrant 2. So that's what I'll do now. I'm going to draw my angle, and I know it must be in quadrant 2. And I know it's in quadrant 2 because cosine inverse only gives me things in quadrants 1 and 2. And quadrant 2 is where cosine happens to be negative. And we know cosine is x over r. And so I could say that x is negative 6. The y value is unknown. But I know that r is 13. And I can find out what x is. Again, just using what I have, r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. And then I would be able to find out, without too, too much difficulty, what exactly I have for my value of y. So r squared, r is 13 squared, that's 169. x squared, negative 6 squared, that's 36. And I can find that y squared is 169 minus 36, which is 133. And so that y needs to be root of 133. And I know it's positive root of 133 because of where we are. We're in quadrant 2, and in that quadrant, the y values are positive. So there we go. We know what x, y, and r are. And now let's figure out our value for tangent. We're looking for a tangent of cosine inverse of negative 6 thirteenths, or in other words, we're looking for tangent of theta. And we said that x, y, and r have the values negative 6, root of 133, and 13. We know that tangent is y over x, which is root of 133 over negative 6. So, therefore, our answer is negative root 133 over 6. Okay, let's do another one here. We've got secant of tangent inverse of 1. And if I were to let theta be tangent inverse of 1... In other words, we're saying that we want an angle theta where tangent of theta is equal to 1. And you know that with your 45, 45, 90 triangle, that that's where you would have tangent having a value of 1. You know that tangent of pi over 4 is 1 over 1, which is just 1. And remember that the output for tangent inverse has to be somewhere between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. And this angle definitely is in that interval. So that means we can say that our angle theta should be pi over 4. So now let's solve our problem. We're looking for secant of tangent inverse of 1, which is the same thing as looking for secant of theta which, of course, we know that's just the reciprocal of cosine of theta. And we know what the angle is. The angle is pi over 4. 
And we know if you're thinking about your special triangle, cosine should be 1 over root of 2, which means that secant should be the reciprocal of that, root of 2 over 1, or just root of 2. Now, if we've got the inverse trig function on the outside, in a way it's a little bit easier. Because, again, we're going to start in the inside, and if you can evaluate the trig function that's on the inside, then there we go. Go ahead and please do evaluate it. Once you do, then you would have just an inverse trig to evaluate. So if you had sine inverse of cos of 0, you could find out that cos of 0 is 1. And so that means that sine inverse of cos of 0 is sine inverse of 1. And then we just need to evaluate that. And that, I can find, turns out to be pi over 2. If it turns out that you can't find the exact value for that inside trig function, then you can just use your calculator to find the approximate value. Don't forget, of course, that we're thinking about these angles as being in radians, so make sure that your calculator is in radians mode before uh, we start using it. So let's do a couple of examples with this. Okay, so first one, we're looking for cosine inverse of sine of 7 pi over 4, and sine of 7 pi over 4 we can find out without too, too much difficulty. Because we know that 7 pi over 4, that that has reference angle pi over 4. And we know what sine of pi over 4 is. Using our special triangle, that 45, 45, 90 triangle or pi over 4, pi over 4, pi over 2, that the value for sine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. We also know that the quadrant that we're in is one where sine is negative, and so that means sine of 7 pi over 4 should be negative root 2 over 2. So we have now, we're looking for cosine inverse of sine of 7 pi over 4. And we figured out what cosine of 7 pi over 4 was. That was negative root 2 over 2. And now we just need to figure out, well, what's cosine inverse of negative root 2 over 2? If you're thinking back again to root 2 over 2, we know that cosine of positive pi over 4 is positive root 2 over 2. And if we're looking for cosine inverse of negative root 2 over 2, then we would have to be in a quadrant where cosine is negative. Remember, cosine inverse only gives us outputs in quadrants 1 and 2. And since we're looking at cosine inverse of something negative, then I guess we must be in quadrant 2. And we must have a reference angle of pi over 4. So that means the angle we must be talking about should be 3 pi over 4. So cosine inverse of negative root 2 over 2 is 3 pi over 4. Now for this one, we won't be able to evaluate secant of pi over 7 ourselves because, of course, that's not one of our nice angles. And so this means that we'll have to use our calculators and find an approximate value for this. I'm going to enter this all in one go in my calculator, and when I do, I'm going to be using the fact that secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So actually, what I'll be entering will be tangent inverse of 1 divided by cosine of pi over 7. And so when I enter this in my calculator, that's what I'll enter. Second function tangent, and then bracket 1 divided by cosine pi over 7, right bracket, and then equals. Now, of course, remember that your calculator needs to be in radians mode because we're expecting an angle to come out of this in tangent inverse function. And for the inverse trig functions, 
the output is always an angle in radians, never degrees. So make sure your calculator is in radians mode. And I found that this is about 0.837446. So rounding this to three decimal places, this is approximately 0.837.